Hi everyone, Nick here, and today I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful connected dot plots or dumbbell dot plots. Now, I first learned how to make these from Stephanie Evergreen at Evergreen Data. If you read her blog, uh, she has so many great tips and tricks uh, for creating charts in Excel. But this was a connected dot plot, and the, the way in which we made that in Excel was we used a scatter plot as the base, and then each pair of dots was its own series of data that we added one by one by one. If you had a lot of series of data to add, that could get a little time intensive. But then later on, Stephanie posted a, a free webinar when she was working with Novavax to do some visualization of their vaccine data. And she used a stacked bar chart as the base and then was able to use um, some error bars and create use those to create the dots. And that was a much quicker method of creating this chart. I'm going to put those two links in the comments below. So definitely go and check those out. The technique that I'm going to use today is something I recently saw in a video uh, posted by Simon Rowe over at Storytelling with Data. And he used a scatter plot like we normally would for the base of the dot plot. But then he actually used built the built-in error bars to uh, create the connecting lines between between the dots and it's just a very simple elegant formula on the back end a kind of a series of dummy data that we have to insert to tell the error bars how long we want them to be I thought it was a really quick and elegant solution to these connected dot plots I hope you are able to use connected dot plots in your own work so let me go over to my PowerPoint slide and I'm going to show you how I would approach uh, creating this uh, slide and this connected dot plot right from scratch so okay I'm gonna go ahead and escape Here's my nice clean slide in PowerPoint. If you have a placeholder like this, it's a content placeholder. All you need to do to insert a chart and build it directly in PowerPoint is select this little, click on this little um, bar chart icon here, insert chart pops up, and you just have to select from the types of charts that you want. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the XY scatter plot. I'm gonna select that and click okay. It gives me kind of this default scatter plot. I'm going to go ahead and delete the title. You can also see that it gives me this Excel workbook. Anytime you embed a chart in PowerPoint, it comes from an Excel workbook that it directly embeds into that slide. And so it gives you, uh, if you just put in a chart without any data right away, it just gives you this sort of dummy data, this, this default data. So in my case, I was looking at museum visitors and I was looking at the survey question that they responded to, which we asked them which words, if any, describe their experience with the museum today. And we had this list of eight words they could select all that apply. So I wanted to see how members and non-members uh, performed on these items. And that connected dot plot would be a really great way to show the difference between how they responded on the survey. So you can see right here, this is my non-member data. This is how many non-members uh, responded or selected each of these words. And this is how many members selected each of these words. Now, because I've made dot plots before, I know that we're going to have to have that extra column of Y value data. So I just added that here. And the numbers that you use are just equivalent to the number of pairs of dots that you're going to have. So we have eight pairs of dots here. So it's just going to be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole table of data, and we're going to paste it into the chart in our PowerPoint slide. So let's go back to our slide. Our um, our Excel workbook is still up. If we close this Excel workbook, all we would have to do to get it back is right click inside the chart and select on edit data. So when I do that, the Excel workbook pops up. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to paste the data that we just copied. It's gonna make the chart look wild, but then we're gonna go ahead and edit some things. So now I have to go up here to the data menu and click on select data. That is going to give me this select data source uh, dialog box here, and it shows you all the different series of data that you have along the X and the horizontal and the vertical axes. So right here I have three series of data. The Y value data is, we don't even need that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And then the non-member and member data, I need to tell Excel the chart where I wanna pull the X and Y values from. So let's go to non-members and select on edit. And I'm gonna go here to X values. I'm gonna go uh, select the X values that I want for that, push enter. And then under Y values here, I'm going to select the Y values eight through one. I'm gonna do the same thing for members, edit, and then my X values here. And then my Y values are gonna be the same column, eight through one there push enter. Now when I push OK on the select data source uh, dialog box, it's going to make the chart look a lot nicer, a lot more, a lot closer to what we want to see in the end. So go ahead and push OK here. 
Excellent. So I'm actually going to close out of this long Excel workbook that PowerPoint gives me when, when we do that. And now you can see this chart. You can see the two pairs of dots on the lines, and that is going to start looking great. So let's go ahead and do some edits to this chart while I'm still here. Uh, in the markers, we want those to be much bigger because obviously I can't see them very well right now. I'm going to select on the non-member series. All of the dots should be selected. We're going to go over to the Format Data Series menu. That should automatically open there. If it doesn't, I could just right-click on the dots and click on Format Data Series. And we're going to go to the Paint Bucket and then click on Marker. And this is where we can edit the marker shape and the size. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Built-in, make sure the circle is selected. And then right now it defaults to 5 points. Let's put this all the way up to 25 points. Perfect. And let's do the same thing to our uh, member data as well. So I'm going to click on built-in and do 25 there. Now these dots look really nice. We have a nice uh, kind of base of a dot plot here, but you can see there's a lot of white space over here um, and the dots are kind of close together. So I'm going to keep the x-axis because we don't want to be deceptive, but I am going to uh, start the x-axis at 40% so that we can get a little bit more of a sense of what the gaps are between these dots. So I'm going to click on the x-axis and then under axis options, we're going to edit the minimum value to 0.4, which is 40%. And now you can see uh, that start to take shape a little bit more here. All right, I'm going to select out of that chart. Now the thing that we need to do, we need to concern ourselves with, is that connecting line between the dots. So to do that, I have to open my Excel workbook again. So what I'm going to do is right-click, click on Edit Data. My workbook will pop up here, and I'm going to actually create this new column here. I'll just label it Error Bar Length. And the error bar length is going to be a really simple formula. It doesn't matter which uh, column you use uh, to start or finish, but you just have to subtract one column from the other. So subtract members from non-members or non-members from members. Either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, and I'll show you why in a second. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and type a formula equal, and we're going to go ahead and type in this member cell, and then we're going to select minus and then this non-member cell, and that's going to give us the difference. And because this is a dynamic table, it already populates that formula all the way down. So right now I can see that because of the way I did this, members minus non-members, the difference between uh, all of them is positive, meaning that members uh, always perform higher on, the, on these checklists of items than non-members, except for one, I see this negative value down here under um, the word inspirational. So that's kind of interesting. And so that's really going to be, uh, we're going to look at that when we look at the title and we look at how we present these data anyway. But the, um, the sign, whether it's positive or negative, doesn't really matter in this case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to my chart. We can keep this, uh, uh, our Excel file open. I'm going to select the lower pair of dots. In this case, it's the non-members, uh, from the at least from that top row there. And what I'm going to do is, after that's highlighted, go up to the Chart Design tab. And let me move that down just a little bit. Over here on the chart, chart layouts, I'm going to click on Add Chart Element. And here you see error bars. So we're going to go ahead and add any pair of error, any kind of error bar. It doesn't really matter because we're going to customize the length in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Standard Error. When I do this, it gives us both horizontal uh, and vertical. Uh, horizontal and vertical error bars there. We don't need the vertical ones, so I'm going to delete those. And then under the horizontal ones, I just want the top cap. I don't want the bottom cap because I'm going to I want I'm going to want the line to connect these two dots eventually. So what we're going to do is click on that dot. The format error bar menu pops up, and then I'm going to click on the uh, bar chart icon there. Right now it's selected to both. We want to select it. To plus. And so now that lower error bar goes away. And then we're going to click on no cap. We don't need a cap on the line. And then over here under error amount, right now it's selected at standard error. We're actually going to collect, uh, select custom. And then we're going to specify value. When we do this, the custom error bar menu pops up here. And under both positive and negative, I'm going to select the same uh, row, the same uh, column of data. So we're going to go ahead and point to this, the error bar length data, push enter for the positive error values here. And for the negative, we're going to do the same thing. Again, the sign doesn't matter. We're going to click OK. And there you go. So now you can see that we have these beautiful connecting dots, or connecting lines between our dots. And now you can format those lines however you want to. So right now they're really thin and dark. Maybe I want to go ahead and edit the, um, the color, maybe make them kind of a gray tone. And then maybe I want to uh, 
uh, increase the width uh, of that line. So let's go all the way up to maybe eight. That looks pretty nice. I could even maybe make it a little bit lighter, I think. Maybe one shade lighter there. That's pretty nice. And now that means that I don't need to have my horizontal grid lines anymore. So I can go ahead and click those and delete them. I don't have direct labels on my dots, so I'm going to go ahead and keep my, my uh, vertical grid lines. And now what I want to do is create the labels. So we have to go back to our original dot plot tutorial, and we have to create the labels just like we did there. So again, I'm going to add a fake series of data. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and click on edit data. Again, we're going to open our data series. And over here, I'm going to add another column of data. This is going to be my labels. I'm just going to say labels item labels. And because my lowest value on my x-axis right now is 40%, I'm going to make all this, this whole column of x values, I'm going to make that 40%. So let's go ahead and type in 40% there. And I'm just going to drag that down. So that's all 40%. Now what I need to do is go back to my chart design tab and add that new element. So right here, we're going to add a new series of data. And I'm going to point to the labels so that it knows where it is. And then the x values are going to be y, are going to be all that 40%, uh, the 40% column. Push enter. And then the y values, I'm going to go back to my 8 through 1 column. Push enter. And now I'm going to push OK. And when I push OK, we're going to see my little label dots down there, just like we did in our previous uh, video where we just made a regular dot plot. You can see my dots right here. I'm going to go ahead and give them labels. So I'm going to add labels. And what we're going to do over here in the format data label options, we're going to create custom labels by uh, the, the names of each of those items. So I'm going to get rid of the, I'm going to uncheck the Y value, and then I'm going to collect, I'm going to select value from cells. When I do that, my Excel book, book pops up again. I'm going to select the data range, and just select my words, my items, and then push enter. And when I do that, you'll see them pop up in the chart. Now, super cool. So now what I can probably do is get rid of my X, uh, or get rid of this Y axis there. And I can also get rid of those dots. We don't need the marker. So highlight those dots, go over to the format data, uh, format data series menu under marker, and then marker options. I'm going to select none. Now, if I wanted to keep them in the inside of the chart, we could do that. I could also put them on the left side of the chart. And so when I select those data labels under label position in the format data label menu, we can make them go on the left of the dots. And what I have to do there is I have to update the, I have to resize the plot area by just dragging that over so that they show up on the left side of that axis line. Now, I don't think I need my, my X axis line, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I'm going to say no line. And I don't really think I need this uh, final line either. But I'm not sure. Oh, actually, I think what I have to do is get that axis back. So in order to get the x-axis back, or the y-axis back, I'm going to go up to Chart Design Tabs, click on the axis option, get my vertical axis back. I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to say no line. Perfect. And then once I do that, you can see there's no line, but my actual labels are still there. Oh, I guess I didn't really do that. Eh, I don't know. I guess that was still the, the, the grid line from 40%, but whatever. I think that's okay. <laughs> these things happen as you're doing these tutorials. So perfect here. What I'm going to do is maybe increase, I'm going to decrease the size of my plot area right here. And then what we might want to do is recolor some of these dots. So maybe I'll make these a nice little orange, nice orange fill. I'm not going to have any lines, and then we can have this nice blue, solid blue there for my members, and no lines. So right now I have no lines around the markers. What if I wanted to have a little bit more depth to these markers? I could probably add a white line around each of them. So I'm going to go back and format uh, the marker and go to the line, solid line, and then say white as a color. And we're going to do that solid white. That looks pretty good. I am liking that quite a bit. Now what we could do is we could also edit the uh, size of the chart. We can make it a little bit bigger. We could edit the size of the x-axis and the y-axis labels. Let's go all the way up to maybe 16 here. That'll be pretty nice. When you edit the size of those labels, you might have to just adjust the size of the plot area to make sure they're all 
each of the labels is sort of right aligned or left aligned perfectly, right aligned perfectly in this case. Now, the other thing that you can see here is that the my um, grid lines, my vertical grid lines go all the way up and they go a little higher than I might want them to. And that's because my X axis was set from zero to nine and we only have eight. So what I could do is I could adjust the size of that X of that Y axis and put it only, uh, make it go from zero to eight or maybe just above eight. So let's actually bring back that vertical axis from that uh, the chart add chart element menu. You can see nine is right there. When I go over to format the axis, the minimum is zero and the maximum is nine. Let's go ahead and make the maximum eight and see what happens. Now I could do that, but you can see that actually half of my connecting line actually gets cut off. So what I need to do is put this maximum value up to maybe 8.1 or 8.2, 8.3. Let's do 8.2 and click enter. When I do that, the minimum value gets a little crazy, so I need to I need to readjust that to zero. And now that looks a lot better. So right here, the axis, uh, the vertical axis is still highlighted. I'm just going to go ahead and push. Um, actually, I'm going to go down here to the labels tab right here. It says next to axis. I'm just going to say none. And then that gets rid of that axis. So that's one way that you can sort of adjust um, the size within the chart. And I think that looks pretty nice. And I'm going to make this go, I'm going to adjust the plot area just a little bit because now what I want to do is embed my legend. So I'm going to select only one dot. I'm going to right click and add a label. And right now it's set to my Y value, but I'm going to adjust that in just a second. We're going to go up to the label options and put that above the dot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck the Y value and I'm going to select series name. And that's going to be non-members. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the color to match. I'm going to do the same thing with my members. We're going to put that above, put that label above, uncheck Y and select series name. There's my members. Pretty cool. It's starting to look really, really nice here. You could adjust the text however you want to. You can see in this slide, I actually made some uh, some graphic design choices here with some graphic design elements. We could do the same thing here on this side. It's just a few boxes. And so that's a really good strategy for sort of making your own PowerPoint templates look really nice. I'm just going to select this, maybe make that orange again, maybe the darker orange. And then you could let's say no line for that. And then you could leave it there or you could do that other blue dot that I had here, just insert the shape. Could be a nice rectangle there. You could update the color. That would look really nice. I think that looks like a pretty nice slide. And maybe we'll adjust the size of the font. 14 and 14, just make sure that they don't overlap too much, but that looks pretty nice. You could adjust the size of the plot area again if we wanted to do that, kind of mess, put, play around with sort of the layout, but I think that looks really nice. A beautiful connected dot plot using that nice, really elegant formula, just so, uh, subtracting one column from the other of data, and then using that uh, difference column to create error bars that are custom, that uh, fit exactly between those two lines of dots. So. I hope that you use this technique. I hope you liked it. I really love it. I know I'm going to use it a lot for uh, visualizing my survey data in the future. Let me know in the comments how you use connected dot plots or dumbbell dot plots in your work. Thank you again for watching. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. If you subscribe, you can also set, uh, set your notifications to get a, a notification each time I post a new video tutorial in data design, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, or presentation design, all that good stuff. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.